Hey everyone, Sleepy here for another Earl Grey pour up. Roll that beautiful bean footage. As you can see, I'm still squatting on uh, Hitwalski's uh, domain. He hasn't come to uh, claim it yet, so I'm just going to sit back and uh, relax. But anyway, let's talk about Star Trek Discovery. The first half of Season 4 is complete. We're through seven episodes, and it is such an amazing arc so far. You can definitely tell the impact that Dr. Uh, Aaron has been having on production. We have got a return to hard science and things that are within the real possibilities. I love it. Since there are plenty of other channels out there on YouTube that summarize every episode, I'm not going to go into too many details. But our main antagonist this season has been the DMA, or the Dark Matter Anomaly. Everyone's like, what is the DMA? My original hypothesis was that it was maybe some kind of a proto-universe trying to form. Obviously, as we've gone through these first seven episodes, it is apparent that it is created via artificial means. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, well, what does that mean? Okay, let's step back a second and let's think about the season and let's see what it represents. The writers always try to take something from pop culture and make an allegory of it. I think it's kind of obvious, or maybe not, that the season may be related to COVID. An unknown entity has invaded that is causing damage and we're trying to figure out the best way of going about defeating it. It sounds very similar to the pandemic. There was a scene in episode seven that led me down to a different conclusion. And this is my theory. There was a lot of information in episode seven that really opened my eyes. So let's discuss my two theories on the origin of the DMA and what the story represents and plus where Calypso fits into this. Yes, I think we've solved that one. Okay. First, at the end of episode seven, Zora gives the coordinates. The coordinates that Zora displayed, we've seen this format in Discovery periodically. It has no rhyme or reason. But I'm going on the assumption that Dr. Aaron has used her influence to make these grounded somewhere in reality. Okay. Future Sleepy here. I'm in the midst of editing this glorious video when I realized I am a buffoon. Someplace on this screen, you can see what I took was a pair of coordinates was not. I must have been half asleep. As you can see, it clearly says 07-89732.33299-99 space plus space 98655. I completely glossed over those spaces. Another way of looking at this, this coordinate could be spoken out loud as 07 mark 89732.33299 mark 99. I'm still holding out hope. That is, isn't techno babble. But regardless, I'm probably completely wrong on the origin. 
of our DNA, but it's still a good video. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. I'm not an astrophysicist, so I have no clue, but I did some assumptions and did some back of the envelope math and took the larger figures of the two pairs that looks like something like, you know, if you take one pair, it looks like it's some kind of degree and then a distance. Degree, distance. You get two pairs. Though I think for three dimensional space, you probably need three pairs, but we'll just run with it. Ignoring the degrees and taking the distance, doing some trigonometry, your a squared plus b squared equals c squared, roughly correlates c squared to 434,000 light years, give or take a thousand. One of the assumptions I'm making is those numbers are not in light years, they're in parsecs. So you have to convert it by 3.2 something to get a parsec, to get a light year. What is exactly 434,000 light years in change away from the Milky Way? Or should I say Earth? The Hercules Dwarf Galaxy, an incredibly old and dying galaxy. So that leads me to two possibilities. I'll tell you right now, the DMA is an Einstein-Rosenberg bridge that is trying to be forced open through artificial means from Hercules in an attempt to escape a dying galaxy. If you ever watch Stargate, you know a Stargate's useless without two Stargates. One Stargate is you know, not going to do anything. It needs an end. The device that they figured out is powering it using a red hypergiant, which sounds about right for power needs, is trying to lock on to a place in a Milky Way to establish the destination. Due to the galactic barrier, they're having some problems locking on. This makes a lot of sense to me. So my two theories when it comes to this is that there is a very ancient race not as powerful as, say, Q or a Traveler. Not much different from the other humanoids in the Milky Way, but more technologically advanced, older. They are trying to escape their dying solar system, solar system, their dying galaxy, and they don't realize what they're doing on this side. They don't realize the damage because the galactic barrier. They're desperate. They're going to be besides themselves knowing that they destroyed an entire planet. Kajon. Still a tear wrencher, whatever the phrase is. So that's why it's important when we're looking through, you know, that vote that some people wanted to do direct military action. And some people wanted to wait and see. Because understanding the intent of the unknown is important. They may not be hostile. They might just have not no clue what they're doing. So in this scenario one, this is an allegory for immigration and refugee crisis that was happening a few years ago. Hey, they're not bad people. They're just in a shitty situation and need help. And the galactic barrier represents borders. So that's my take one. Take two, same setup, Herculean dwarf galaxy, ancient race trying to escape. 
they don't care what they're doing over here. And they don't care as in the purposes of maliciousness. They don't care in the terms of like when you're driving a car down the road, an ant can scream as loud as it wants if it could. You're not going to hear it, notice it, acknowledge it, etc. You're just going to run over it. Same principle. Sentient life in the Milky Way is the equivalent of an ant. Non consequential to whoever this C10 species is. That's theory two on that. Earlier, I mentioned something about Calypso. It was mentioned in episode seven that our Rysian scientist is trying to get to his new home, which is a different quantum reality where there was no burn, no war, no poverty, etc. Sounds great. As I'm joking around with my uh, alter ego character, Commodore Baltics, he comes from a different quantum reality as well. One where his reality was completely wiped out from a different, more powerful entity. Let's continue on that track. What would cause Calypso to be in the state it is? You have Zoro gaining her, her sentience without the refit. That means Discovery never jumped to the future. Let's pull that apart and figure out one moment in time that could cause that kind of shift. Going back to season two of Discovery, when we got Captain Pike going to get the time crystal, either he sees something different or just chooses to take a different path in life. He doesn't get the crystal. Thus means they can't power the Red Angel suit, they can't jump to the future. And that gives a different path for time to follow. So Discovery and Enterprise don't have that major battle. It essentially becomes a cold war between Control and the Federation. I think in this, re this reality that Calypso is set in, I'm going to say it happens at least about a year time passes from the events of season two to when the crew hid Discovery in that nebula. That's enough time to you know, just pick up that shuttle, install Zora's uh, communication interfaces over the doors. And okay, so let's think about the Federation. They dealt with the Klingons and that war they almost lost and then Control comes around. Control ends up becoming a long-term battle. Control never doesn't succeed, but doesn't lose either. I'm going to say in this timeline, eventually they do succeed. Discovery or whoever the Federation succeeds in wiping them out, well, or at least thinking them up. That could go a thousand different ways. But what happens when you're in a war time footing and it goes on for years or decades? Unfavorable elements may be introduced. Thus, like fascism, add a thousand years, and you have the war that Kraft was describing to the point of you have a people that earn for the old days, pre-control, pre-fascist, drash, dra or whatever they're being called in uh, Calypso, to the fact that human populations don't even know what a Tuesday is anymore. I'm almost on board of saying that this quantum reality may even been caused by Q. Sounds very similar to Picard season two of what we've seen teaser wise. Hmm. Sounds like a cinematic universe. Interesting. So is it possible that Picard season two takes place in Calypso's quantum reality and that Picard's job is not to correct it, but to get back to their own quantum reality? Sliderish? I don't know. Lots of possibilities. But let me know in the comments what you think. Is this possible? Could one single change in the timeline 
Pike not getting the crystal cause an evil dystopian federation a thousand years later. I think it could. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe, like, dislike, whatever. You know the drill. As always, stay sleepy, my friends.